Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by the Honorable Dave McCurdy, President of the Electronic Industry Alliance. Thank you for inviting me here to the Electronic Industry Alliance dinner. I want to thank the chairman, Cliff Smith, for his hospitality as well. I see uh, the ambassador from our great friend, the Nation of Israel here. Ambassador Ever, good to see you, sir. Thank you very much for being here. I wasn't exactly sure why you were going to be here until I realized that this uh, banquet is going to honor Felix Zandman for his contribution. Mr. Zandman, congratulations, sir. It must be a pretty big deal to get the ambassador to come to a black tie dinner like this. I know members of the Congress are here, Congressman Barr, Hutchison, Isa, Sheila Jackson Lee from my old hometown of Houston, Texas, and Congressman Nick Smith. It's good to see the members of Congress who are here as well. Every year at this dinner, the GI dinner, we present the EIA Medal of Honor to an individual who has made outstanding contributions to the advancement of the electronic industries. This award, award has been given at the GI dinner every year since 1952, and I won't tell you how old I was in 1952, to some of the biggest names in technology. Our first recipient, was David Sarnoff of the Radio Corporation of America. Other recipients over the years include David Packard of HP, Charles Brown of AT&T, and Sanford or Sandy McDonald of McDonnell Douglas Corporation. Last year's recipient, Congressman Amo Houghton, was awarded this medal for his key role in developing fiber optics while the CEO of Corning. Needless to say, I think we will all agree that Dr. Zanman will be joining a prestigious group of individuals. This year's Medal of Honor goes to Dr. Felix Zanman, who is the Chairman, Scientific Director, and CEO of Vache Intertechnology. Dr. Zanman founded Vache in 1962 and named his new company after his family's ancestral village. Since 1962, Vache has grown to become a global leader in the electronic component industry with annual sales of over two and a half billion dollars. The success of Vache is only the beginning of Dr. Zaman's accomplishments. He has published three textbooks, holds 39 patents in the United States and abroad, he wrote and published his autobiography, Never the Last Journey, recounting his journey from Holocaust survivor to head of a high-tech multinational corporation. When I read his book, a couple things really stood out. One was the very human story, almost unbelievable story, of how he and four others were hidden under the floorboards of a two-room house in Poland during Nazi occupation in a hole for 17 months. And during this time, to keep the sanity, to keep the human quality, they talked about advanced mathematics. They talked about business. And in that period, the seeds were planted for a brilliant and outstanding leader. Included among the very numerous awards given to Dr. Zaman over the course of his career are the France Order of Merit for Research and Invention and the Franklin Institute Medal for Service. The Best Strategic Investor Award from the Israel Manufacturers Association 
and the Legion of Honor awarded by the President of France. But tonight, before I give and ask Cliff to present this award, I do want to read a short letter, if you'll allow me. It's dated the 3rd of May, 2001. Dear friends, it is my pleasure to send you greetings from Jerusalem, the eternal capital of the Jewish people for the last 3,004 years, and the state of Israel for the past 53 years and forever. I congratulate the Electronic Industries Alliance on selecting Dr. Felix Zandman as the recipient of their 2001 Medal of Honor. As CEO and Chairman of the Board of the Shea Intertechnology Incorporated, Dr. Zandman has shown vision, leadership, and courage. He is a friend and someone worthy of our respect and admiration. His involvement in community, civic, and philanthropic endeavors is most notable and exemplary. Bache is a successful multinational corporation with many plants and facilities in Israel. In 1969, Dr. Zaman had the vision to establish a factory in Israel, helping to develop the high-tech industry. We are grateful for his unwavering support, enthusiasm, and commitment to the state of Israel. Please extend my warm congratulations to Dr. Felix Zaman. Sincerely, Ariel Sharon. I think Dr. Zaman, those words uh, are repeated by many across this country and certainly throughout this audience. I can continue to read the many honors and degrees and the research uh, awards that he's had. But let me just say again, as I started with the one story about his trip from a boy in occupied Poland to France to the United States, that he has embodied the human spirit the sense of freedom, of entrepreneurialism, of really the creativity it takes to make this world a better place. And he's never forgotten from where he came and that the best words, and I believe in the book, he cited, I think, your grandmother, that's more important to give than to receive. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me, but it's a pleasure for all of us at EIA to award this year's EI Medal of Honor to Dr. Felix Zaman. Doctor? President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, I would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the honor you bestowed upon me by awarding me the medal, the EIA Medal of Honor. It means a tremendous thing for me. It's just extraordinary that coming to this country with nothing and Obtaining this award is really unbelievable. I never dreamed that this day will happen one day. Today, however, is an extremely important day for me and for many, for the humanity, as a matter of fact. It is the 8th of May. 8th of May is the surrender of Nazi Germany. It's now 56 years after World War II was finished, and after I regained freedom, I regained my life, I was a free man again, and after the time where people started to return from war, concentration camps, hiding places, very symbolic day.
wonderful day that I survived to be able to be here and to ce celebrate this 56th day of the victory. As a little boy, at the age of 15, I was left alone. I survived only with one person of my family, my uncle. 30,000 Jews of Grodno, of my city where I was born. From 30,000 people, only 100 survived. 40 members of my family perished. I lived in a home, as you described so ably, about one and a half meters by one and a half meters surface and less than a meter high, barely could sit there for 17 months. And yet we didn't lose our time. My uncle who was an engineer taught me mathematics in the darkness, we talked about it. And when I left the hall, when I was free finally, I was able to pass all the exams. I went to France, got a PhD in physics, a doctorate and an engineering degree and invented certain things and then came to the United States. What a wonderful country. <laughs> just, just all that in one sentence. <laughs> well, I came here in 1956 as director of research for the boat company, I invented a method for measuring stresses in airplanes. And because of that, I was brought into this country. And I worked on almost all the aircraft which were built here at the Jet Age, starting with the 707, through the 747, through the, all the Fs, F-16, 15, 18, you name it. <laughs> uh, the Cs, if the C-58, the C-141, etc. The atomic submarine, Skipjack, NASA projects, we were all involved in that. It was an extremely exciting time for me. And I thank God that I was able to put my hand to that. And unbelievably that I was able to really to help a little bit to the strength of the United States. But even more exciting started immediately after that. I had the chance to come up with an idea to develop a resistor with a very low temperature coefficient it's not sensitive to temperature changes, and wanted to open a company. Well, I went to Mr. Bod, and I proposed this idea. He looked at me, and he said, look, I know you're a good technical man, but let's make a market research. Well, they went and made a market research. After two weeks, they came back and said, there's no market for that, and therefore, we are not going to fund you. Thank God for that. <laughs> if the Bud Company would have funded this project, which would be successful. I would be retired since a long time. <laughs> and I intend to continue to go on and to go on as long as God will give me the strength to be able to do that. This little resistor uh, pushed me to open a company of, myself, of my own. I left the Bud Company and I opened what is today called a startup with $4,000. I got a loan of $200,000 from uh, relative, and we split the shares 50-50, and the remainder is history. Step by step, we built Vichet to two and a half billion dollar company. 20,000 people. We have 20,000 people, 14 countries. We are number one in passive components in the United States and Europe, and we are getting involved more and more and becoming major also in the active component area. It was always my dream to be able to contribute to my people, the Jewish people. And Vichay gave me this opportunity. We opened three, we opened first one, then three, then four plants in Israel and employed over 4,000 people there, most of them in the south, in the desert, in fact, in the Negev. Big thing for me. That 
after surviving of what happened during the war, I was able to put my hand to the helping of the economy of the Israeli, of Israel, and to help my people. While we are passing today a worldwide turbulent economic time, there is no doubt in my mind that this is only a very, very temporary situation and that we will change, we will emerge out of it only stronger and stronger. Those things happen, we know that very well. Every few years there are recessions, but after the, a recession, after a rain, there is the sun, after the night, there is the day. We are right now in a recessive mood, and I have all the confidence in the world that we will be winning and going and continue to push electronic ahead, electronics ahead. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my wife, Ruta, for the support and help all along the way. Without her, I couldn't have accomplished all that. Of course, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my management. Without them, Vichy couldn't be what it is today. As a matter of fact, this Medal of Honor belongs to them. It is their loyalty, hard work, devotion, and inventiveness which brought Vichy to its position today. I applaud them. Now, looking back, many people ask me very often, from where does the inspiration come? How come I did that or I did that? From where does the fire come? From where does the push come to me? And when I think about it, it's really the Bible. I will tell you here a couple small stories. One you have started to say already, but I want to elaborate on that. When I was a little boy, I stood at the balcony together with my grandmother, holding her hand. She looked at me and she said, Felix, to whom belongs this house? And I said, it's our house, we live there, always was ours. She said, no, it's not our house. You know, tomorrow it can burn, it can be destroyed. Uh, it's really not ours. And she says, how about the gardens and so on? He said, it's ours. She says, no, it's not ours either. Then I understood what she meant, and I said, I think I know what you mean. My father told me all the time, go to school, learn, 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 whatever you have in your head, nobody will take it away. She looked at me, and she said, well, that's not ours either. So I said, what do you mean? She said, look, people thought that the earth is flat. We know today it's not flat. What you know today, maybe it's not true tomorrow. Maybe you'll forget about it. It's not yours either. I was very frustrated. Then I asked her, well, do we have anything? Do we own anything? And, and she says, yes, we own a tremendous thing. We own whatever we give. If you give to somebody something, if you help him, this nobody will ever be able to take away from you, even after your death. Giving is the biggest thing. Well, let me tell you the continuation of that in a certain way. My grandmother was continuously giving, a big philanthropist, and she helped a certain family. Among others, we never knew. We never knew whom she was helping. We knew all the, only that she was doing it all the time. And there was a poor Polish family called Puchalski in Grodno, near Grodno in a forest. And they were the innkeepers of some summer houses which she owned. And one day she helped them. Nobody knew about it. Of course, I didn't know. We never talked about that. But during the war, when I needed shelter, on February 12, 1943, I was hounded like a dog, run away from a transport where people were sent to death. I was alone. And at 7 o'clock in the morning, I was going out from the forest, coming to this house. And I opened the door, and I said to Mrs. Puchalski, could you shelter me just for one day? After one day, we'll see what I'll do after I go some farther and so on. She opened her, her arms, she kissed me, and she said, God send you. I will save you. Whatever happens to me happens to you. We'll be all together. I said, what are you doing? You can't do things like that. You do realize that if you do that, your life is in jeopardy. If they catch you, they'll hang you, they'll hang the children, they burn out the house. How can you do that? This was the law in Poland at that time. 
And she said, God send you, I will do that. And she saved me and four more people. And this is because of a simple act of my grandmother. I asked her, why do you do that? And she says, that's because of your grandmother. Your grandmother one day helped me, God sent you back to me, I feel I got to do that. And I am here today because of her. And because of that also, we have called the company Vichay. When you said it's ancestral village, it's true. It's a village on the border between Poland and Lithuania. It's the name of a little village where my grandmother was born. And to commemorate all the people which were killed there and my grandmother, I decided to call the company Vichay. And what, what Vichay is today, look at that. It's enormous on the lips of thousands and thousands of people on billions of components all over the world. The name Vichay resonates everywhere. This gives me a very strong feeling and a, a feeling of victory, really. This is my victory over what happened before. <laughs> now another small issue about motivation about what is pushing me. And I wasn't always wanted to think, how do we have to conduct ourselves at Vichay? What should be the doctrine of Vichay? Well, we all have companies. We have companies and we say, what, what is the goal of the company and what is the strategy of the company and things like that. I think that a company should have a doctrine at least I thought about it, and I would like to tell in a few words what it is, inspired from the Bible. Tell the story of Gideon. Gideon was a leader from the Bible, which had 30,000 people, and he was supposed to defend his country from millions of enemies. And the Bible said, and they were like sand on the beach. Poor guy with 30,000 people, how is he going to do that? Very small in respect to very big. Very small company in respect to the big world, big competition. How should we conduct ourselves? Well, he took the 30,000 people. The story says he asked them who married. Some people left their hand. He sent them home. He said, your, your, your feeling, your, your heart is with your wife. Go home. And so and so. He sent some peasants home. And then he asked, and who is afraid? Most of them leave their hand, send them home. And he was left with 3,000 people. He took the 3,000 people to the river. And he asked him to drink water. Most of them went on the knees and drank water. Only 300 scooped the water without kneeling. The ones which kneeled, he sent home saying, you are slaves at heart. Go home. I will fight only with 300. He decided that it is better to fight with 300 determined people, no matter how small they are, properly armed, properly done, rather than to have 30,000 where he was not very sure what will happen. And as the story goes, he gave them rams and fires, attacked in the middle of the night, very highly, very well coordinated, very good discipline, special armaments, armaments, and he attacked them precisely at the same time and won the war. They killed themselves among themselves, big panic, and he won the war. He saved the country. From there comes out five points, which I believe a small company and a large company could use as a doctrine. One is leadership. A company needs a leader to show the way. We need motivation, number two. People which work in the company should work not only for money, should work in what they believe, they should love what they do, and we have to motivate them, not an easy way. Special products, special weapons, equal to that. Always be different than the other guy. Number four, discipline. Whatever you do, it has to be right on time. Uh, Rolls Royce with 12 cylinders, if one doesn't work well, the machine doesn't work well. It has to be perfect, especially if you are small. So we have leadership, motivation, special weapons, special products, and discipline. Do we have everything? No. The fifth thing is the most important. We got to have clean hands. There is no leadership without clean hands. This is the most important thing in business, and I believe it from all my, of my heart. 
we got to have clean hands to win the battle. Otherwise, our people don't believe in us, and we can't lead. This is my guide in business, and I hope Fiché will continue in this way. Now, who am I? Who am I? Me, Felix Zandman. I'm a product of the past. I'm a Jew, Holocaust survivor, but also I'm a product of present, of what I am now, family member, Vishé. I am an American and an Israeli. For me, both are strongly intertwined. I owe to America what I have become. I owe to Israel my identity as a Jew. What a miracle, only to think. I should have been dead since 1943 during the Holocaust. And look now, I survived, and here I have a family. There's Vichay, our company. There is Israel, reborn after 2,000 years of exile. Oh, what a miracle, what a wonderful thing that it exists. Only in America could I have prospered and built Vichay. America and Israel are in my heart, and I pray to God every day for their strength and prosperity in a peaceful world. Thank you. Speaking for all these great, great companies out here that represent our tremendous electronics industry, I am really proud that we can present you with this highest honor from our group, the EIA Medal of Honor, in recognition of all of your wonderful contributions to our industry. Thank you, Jankuya Barzman. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 